My father was born in the year 1918, almost exactly one century before today. In his generation, they saw the advent of antibiotics and modern surgical techniques, a lot of the current medicines that we use today. And this extended the um, expectancy of human lifespan from about 45 years of age when he was born to the mid 70s today. But what does the future hold for people born in this year, 2018? How long could they live and what would their lifespan be like? There's a lot of talk about how medical knowledge, like computer science, is increasing exponentially. There's talk about the singularity of such a fundamental change in technology and science that everything explodes, changes dramatically. Will we see such a thing applied in human medicine such that will extend human lifespan much more dramatically in the coming generation than in the past 100 years? Most scientists that seriously study the biology of aging believe that at least part of that would be true. So what we know for sure is that the ability of medical researchers to look into the microscope and to look into cells and to understand the mechanisms of aging in the human body, even on a cellular level, is really dramatically increased in power over the last decade or so. And indeed, we're seeing that sort of exponential increase in the power of science to answer fundamental questions and to apply that in the clinic, in medicine, in practical applications today. And so none of us really know how long the generation coming in the next 100 years will be able to live. But most thoughtful scientists that study the biology of aging believe that we'll be doing more than just extending the average life expectancy of people will actually be extending the lifespan of the human species. The implications of that for you and me and for society and for our economy could be profound. And so it's time for all of us to be thinking about the implications of that revolution in medicine for our families and for society as a whole.